Hello friends. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the names of countries, peoples, and languages in English. So let's start with this one. What do we call this place? Well, the people who live there call it Deutschland. In Turkey, they call it Almanya. But in English, we call it Germany. So this shows us that it can be sometimes difficult to know what to call a place or the people from that place in any language that we're learning. So in this lesson, we're going to focus on the words and names we use for different countries in the world, the people who come from those countries and the languages they speak. And we're going to focus on some of the suffixes that we use to name these places and these people so that you can see the patterns in English. So there are many countries and peoples in the world, and we're not going to be able to talk about all of them in this lesson. So we're going to focus on some specific ones so that we can see the patterns in the names that we use in English and so that you can get an idea of the spelling and the pronunciation of these different places, peoples, and languages in English. When we're naming peoples and languages in English, we tend to use some common suffixes. Those are the an or ian suffix, the ish suffix, the es or ese suffix, the i or e suffix, and ik. For example, in North America, we have a few different countries. So the first one is America, because that's where I am right now. So we call the country America and the people Americans. Now, some people argue about this because the country is technically the United States of America, but normally people just call it America, even though America is all of the land in North America and South America. Another country in North America is Canada, and the people from Canada we call Canadians. We've also got Mexico, and the people from Mexico are Mexicans. And then there's Cuba, and the people from there are called Cubans. And there's Haiti, and the people from there are Haitians. If we go a little bit south into Central America, we've got Guatemala, and the people are Guatemalans. We've got Costa Rica, the people are Costa Ricans. And in South America, we've got Brazil, the people are Brazilians. Colombia, the people are Colombians. Ecuador, the people are Ecuadorians. And if we look at the languages, we've got three main languages in North and South America. Those are English. Spanish and Portuguese. So Portuguese is the main language in Brazil. Now, if we look at North and South America, we can basically divide it into two. We've got Anglo America in the North and Latin America in the South. So we call the North Anglo America because the common language is English. So sometimes you'll see Anglo and English used together. And in the South from Mexico all the way down to the south of South America, we call Latin America because the two main languages are Spanish and Portuguese, which are two languages that came from Latin. English did not come from Latin. When we go over to Europe, it's a little bit more complicated when we look at the peoples and languages. So we've got the country of Ireland and the people are the Irish. We've got the country of Portugal and the people are the Portuguese. We've got the country of Spain, and the people are the Spanish, or they can also be called Spaniards. So you'll notice that when we start using this ish suffix and the ease suffix, that when we're talking about the people, we often say the. So we say the Portuguese, or we say the Spanish. But for this odd one here, Spaniards, we don't say the normally. In France, we have the French. In Great Britain, we have the British or Britons. So Great Britain includes the whole island here. But within the island of Great Britain, there's actually three different parts. There's England, which is the main part, and the people from there we call the English. There's Scotland, and the people are the Scottish or also called Scots. And then there's Wales, and the people are called the Welsh. So sometimes the name, the British and the English, 
are used like they mean the same thing, but they don't mean exactly the same thing. Technically, the English are people from England, whereas the British could be anybody from the whole island. If we go a little bit north, we've got Iceland, and the people are Icelanders. We've got Norway, and the people are Norwegians. We've got Sweden, and the people are the Swedish, or Swedes. We've got Finland, the people are the Finnish, or Finns. And we've got Denmark, and the people can be called the Danish, or Danes. Now, if we take those countries together as a group, we've got this region called Scandinavia. The people from Scandinavia are called Scandinavians, and they include the countries Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. And I focus on this because in the area of the United States where I live, most of the people that live here are Scandinavian. They come from one of these countries, specifically from Norway, Sweden, or Denmark. If we go a little bit further south in Europe, we've got the Netherlands or Holland, and the people from there are called the Dutch. And this is one of the most confusing ones in Europe, if we look at just the names. So we've got this country here called the Netherlands. It's also sometimes called Holland, even though Holland is only one part of the Netherlands. So it's a little bit confusing, like England or Great Britain. So the Netherlands is actually the whole country. Holland is just one part of the country. But we call the people the Dutch. So this name is not even related to the Netherlands or Holland. So it can be a little bit confusing to remember. Next door, a couple of countries. We've got Poland or the Polish, or we can call the people the Poles. There's Russia or the Russians. There's Ukraine, and we call the people Ukrainians and Italy, and we call the people Italians. Now, an odd one here is Greece. We call the people Greeks. So this is not one of our common suffixes here. We've just got the plural S to talk about the people. So with any of these countries, when we're looking at the names of the people, if we take off that S ending, then we have an adjective that can describe the people from the country or the language. For example, we have the Italian language, the Italian people, Italian food, Italian culture. So Italian is an adjective describing things from Italy. Italians, with the plural S, are the people from that country. And this works for the other names of the other countries and peoples as well. For the languages in Europe, there are too many really to list here. So I've got some of the main ones that you'll find in Europe. There's English, German, Spanish, French, Italian, Dutch, Icelandic, Swedish, Norwegian, Finnish, Polish, Latvian, Estonian, Russian, Ukrainian, Romanian, and there are others as well. The point of showing all this is so that you can see the common suffixes that are on each of these names. Now, not every language will use these suffixes. For example, Dutch, it's not using one of these suffixes here. And there are some other languages in the world that don't use these common suffixes. But you can see that these ones get used quite a bit for these different languages. Now, the S or the CH in, in French is related to the ish, like in Spanish or English. We can also divide these languages into groups. So we've got the Germanic languages. We've got the Romance or Latin languages. We've got the Slavic languages, the Celtic languages, and the Greek languages. Well, I was about to say languages. It used to be languages, but now it's I think it's really just one language. Um, according to their color. So the, the red colored countries speak a form of Germanic. So English is a Germanic language. German is a Germanic language. Dutch is a Germanic language. The Scandinavian languages are Germanic, except for Finnish. The blue ones come from Latin. They're also called Romance languages, like French, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Romanian, etc. The Slavic languages are in green. 
like Russian, Ukrainian, Polish, etc. The Celtic languages are really just kind of limited over here. They used to be a larger part of Europe. Um, so Welsh is a Celtic language, um, some forms of Irish are Celtic, and then the Greek language down here in yellow, um, which used to be more diverse, I think, than it is now. Now, the important thing here is that when we're talking about language families, we often use this ick ending on the word. If we move over to Africa, we've got, for example, the country of Morocco and the people of the Moroccans. Egypt, the people are the Egyptians. Sudan, the people are the Sudanese. Somalia, the people are Somalis. Ethiopia, the people are Ethiopians. Cameroon, the people are Cameroonians. Liberia, the people are Liberians. Congo, the people are the Congolese. And the African languages, there again are too many that we can list here. We don't have enough time for them all. Here are the most common languages in Africa. Swahili, Hausa, Yoruba, Amharic, Igbo, and Fula. And we can divide these languages into different groups. You can kind of see how they're distributed, but there are many more than this. Now, when we're looking at the African languages, they're actually a little bit uh, different with the endings because you see we have some A and O endings here, which are not common when we're naming languages in English. We do have a couple of common suffixes, the I in Swahili and the ik in Amharic. Um, but the other ones are a little bit different than the normal in English. If we move over to Asia, we've got the country of China. The people are called the Chinese. The country of Japan, the people are the Japanese. The country of Korea, and the people are Koreans. The country of the Philippines, and the people are Filipinos. And this one is interesting because when we're spelling it, the country usually gets a ph at the beginning whereas the people get an f at the beginning of the word i don't know exactly why that is and it often causes me problems when i'm trying to spell it in english um, but there it is so the philippines it's many islands down here in southeast asia we've got vietnam and the vietnamese thailand and the thai and this one is different too um, because when we say the thai we don't have any of the common suffixes when we're talking about the people. We don't say the, the Thailandese or um, the Thailandese or anything like that. We just say the Thai. In India, we have the Indians. And this one causes confusion when we're talking about people from India versus the native peoples of the Americas. So in America, we have Indians. And in India, there are Indians. Now, the reason we have Indians in America is because when the Europeans found the Americas, they thought they were in India. So we call them Indians now, but that is changing. Um, so now the people in, in um, the Americas, the native peoples, often get called Native Americans or the first peoples. Or there are some other terms for them as well. So it can be confusing when we talk about the Indians. Are we talking about India Indians or American Indians? We have the country of Nepal, and the people are the Nepalese. The country of Bhutan, and the people are the Bhutanese. Pakistan, and the people are Pakistanis. Afghanistan, and the people are Afghanis. Saudi Arabia, and the people are sometimes called Saudis, sometimes just called Arabs. The country of Iraq, and the people are called Iraqis. The country of Israel, and the people are called Israelis or Israelis. So if you're in North America, people will pronounce it uh, Israel and Israelis. The country of Jordan and the people are Jordanians. The country of Iran and the people are Iranians. The country of Syria and the people are Syrians. Now, as I mentioned before, people from Saudi Arabia, we can call them Arabs. But really, any of these countries over here in the Middle East, Iraq, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and the Gulf states can all be called Arabs or Arab in English, which can be confusing for some Americans because some Americans don't realize that the people of Turkey and the people of Iran are not Arab. And so sometimes in 
the United States, people will just refer to anybody in the Middle East as Arab. Um, but technically, these countries here are Arab, whereas the people from Iran and the people from Turkey are generally not Arab. We've got the country of Turkey and the people are called Turks. So again, we see we don't have one of the common suffixes here. We just have the plural S. And among Asian languages, again, there are too many to list. So some of the main ones are Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Mongolian, Vietnamese, Malay, Tagalog, Thai, Hindi, Urdu, Farsi, Turkish, Arabic, and Hebrew. So we can see some of the common suffixes here when we're looking at the names of the languages. But we also see that some of the languages don't have any of the common suffixes like Hebrew, Malay, Tagalog, and Urdu. So again, to review, when we're talking about the peoples and languages of the world in English, we often use these common suffixes with them. The A-N or I-A-N, the ish, the ease, E or I, and ik. If we put them together, we can see that the A-N or I-A-N suffix is by far the most common one that we use when we're naming peoples and languages in English. So this isn't even all of the peoples or um, languages that use the A-N or I-A-N. This is basically just what I could fit on the screen right now. So Russian, Ukrainian, German, American, Mexican, Colombian, Ecuadorian, Peruvian, etc., etc., or even the groups. So we could say African, European, Asian, Middle Eastern, Scandinavian, South American, Central American. So this is the most common one that we use in English. Another common one is the ish ending. So we've got the Irish, the Scottish, the British, the Danish, the Swedish, the Spanish, the Polish, the French, the Kurdish, the Turkish. If we look at these countries, it seems like we use the ish suffix for countries mostly in Europe. So if we look at all of these here, all of these are European countries. The only ones that are not are the Kurdish and the Turkish. So this one gets used, it seems like, mostly for European countries. The I suffix, Somali, Nepali, Afghani, Pakistani, Hindi, Israeli, Iraqi, Azeri, Omani, Yemeni, Saudi, Qatari, Kuwaiti. If you look at this group, it seems to be mostly used, this suffix, for countries that are in the Middle East. Um, now, Somali is not in the Middle East, but... It is very close to the Arabian Peninsula, so the only one here that really doesn't fit is Nepali. Um, but for the other ones, they're mainly countries that are in the Middle East or Central Asia. The E's ending, or the E suffix, uh, Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, Bhutanese, Taiwanese, Burmese, Portuguese, Senegalese, Congolese, Sudanese. This one seems to mainly get used for countries that are in East Asia or in Africa. The only one that's not is Portuguese, um, which is in Europe and Portugal. But the other ones seem to be either East Asia or Africa. And the ik suffix usually gets used for language groups. So we've got the Nordic languages, the Arabic language, Italic, Uralic, Baltic, Altaic, Semitic. So these are groups of people or groups of languages. The only one that's an individual language is Icelandic. These other ones are kind of groups of languages or regions. So that's it for this introduction to the names of countries, peoples, and languages in English. I hope it was helpful and thank you for watching.